for you. Thank God for all that the Lord has been adding onto your life. Pray that you will not be missed out at this hour in the name of Jesus. Take time to prepare your heart before the Lord. Take time to prepare your heart. Present your heart unto the Lord. You can never hear too much of the word of God. Stand thy own image deep in my heart. Pray that the Lord will speak unto you. The Lord will minister unto you. You will not be too tired to hear the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we want to thank you for bringing us together once again. Thank you for your children. Thank you for all that you have added into their lives. Thank you for the way you have been drilling them all the while. Thank you because you still have so much to add unto their lives. Father, Lord, I'm praying over that you will speak unto them in Jesus' name. So, Lord, the personality we are studying this afternoon has so many lessons to teach every one of us from the coordinators to the executives, to the workers, even to the preacher himself. Lord, I'm praying that which we need to learn from this particular character. We pray that you will help us to learn it and to appropriate them into our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that we will not be too familiar with your word. But we pray that your word will bring forth hundred folds of fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. I'm praying to God, every brother, every sister, Lord, I pray. You know the state of everyone. You know the level of any, everyone. You know the status of everyone. Lord, I'm praying, O God, that you will rehabilitate everyone this day in Jesus' name. We are welcoming you, the surgeon from heaven, that you will perform the operation in our lives, and you make our lives to be defeating before you in Jesus' name. We are just overconfident. I pray, Father, you will deal with it this day in Jesus' name. We are there in carelessness. I pray, Father, you will awake us in Jesus' name. I pray that this message will reposition us in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you have answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have our seats. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have come to this particular aspect of our uh, end of uh, semester workers retreat. And uh, by the grace of God, I want to believe that God has been blessing us so much. And God sees us a lot to add unto our lives. And I pray that we will not miss out in the blessings of God in Jesus' name. Uh, this afternoon we will be considering an important message and we will be having a character study. Uh, this person we want to be discussing is someone who has so much to teach us. And I pray the grace to be like Jesus. The Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. The person we are studying as Jesus' resemblance. In fact, at 30, he stood before the king. He was made... And he was a man that stands out from the scripture. This man has level of obedience and is observant. He's also selfless and separatist. He's also having a, a character, a uh, characteristic rather that we can refer to as enduring. He's also an elegant personality. He's pure and persistent. He's also holy and humble. Even though he lived in an uh, environment that is hostile, we feel that he was still able to stand how He was made naked. Uh, he was disowned. A lot of things 
were done unto him. As I told us, he has the resemblance of Jesus. Obedience and observance. Selfless and separatist. Enduring and elegant. Pure and persevering. Holy and humble. The grace to have such, the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. This afternoon we are considering Joseph in Potiphar's house. Joseph in Potiphar's house. Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. I'll be reading from verses 1 to 23. Genesis chapter 39, verses 21, 1 to 23. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought in of the hands of Ishmael, which had brought in down Peter. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand, and it came to pass. From the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master watered not what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he had to my hand. There is no greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass. About this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there with him, and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled, and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house, and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he asked that, I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to this word, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass. When his master asked the word of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there was the jewel of it. Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. I pray the Lord will minister unto us this afternoon in Jesus' name. Just like we know that uh, in the pages of the scripture, there are so many characters that can be studied, and each of them has different lessons to teach us. 
Joseph is one of the character in the Bible. And as we know that, he is the second to the last uh, of Jacob's children. Jacob's children and is a special child. Just like we read here, we see that Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Joseph wasn't an Egyptian, but he was sold and was brought down to Egypt. There are certain facts we need to know about Joseph. If you look at the life history of Joseph, Joseph always found himself in an, on, in an, uh, in an, in an outside environment, unfriendly environment. But even though he has always been finding himself in that situation, we discover that he has always been standing out. He has always been a shining light. I pray wherever you find yourself, even as you go for this holiday, you will be a shining light in Jesus' name. If you look at it, even among his brethren, you can discover that that wasn't also, all the same, a very right environment for him. Because he was hated. Because he was never liked by any of his brethren as a result of his righteousness. Not at alone, Joseph was always in the midst of people who did not share the same conviction with him. So if you say you are in a place where you don't have the same conviction that you have, maybe in your family, and that is the platform upon which you now allow sin to come in into your life, then you will not be like this particular character that we are studying. Joseph was found, also, uh, also found himself in the midst of the people that also hate him. That verse 1 said, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought in, uh, brought in of the hands of Ishmaelites, which had brought him down to Joseph in Potiphar's house is a topic that is pointing our attention to possibility of believers being faced with temptation and the need for us to be steadfast even in the midst of temptation. As you are traveling home after now, there will be temptation of different kinds. But you have certain lessons to learn from our character of today. No doubt about it, even Jesus Christ, our master, was tempted, but he, overco- he overcame. I pray that you also, you will overcome in Jesus' name. You come to think about it, how come that Joseph did not allow temptation to overcome him? How come that Joseph was able to stand in the midst of the hostile environment? It's because of the following, I want to tell you. Number one, Joseph was a man that asked, Attitude. When a man has attitude, then he must also possess attitude. He has attitude, therefore he has right attitude. Not that alone. If you look at Joseph as a man, Bible makes to understand that he is an handsome man. I want to put it this way, beautiful. And he, he is beautiful because he also has beginning. If you look at it, he has always been living a life that is right. Before this time, not as alone, is a man with content. And when a man has content, he must also be consistent. That's why he has to be consistent because he has content. Not that alone, Joseph is a dreamer. You remember, he told the brethren the dream that he had, and that put him in trouble. He even told his father the dream that he had, and the father rebuked Are you telling me that myself and your mother will be bowing down for you? That dream put him in trouble. Because he's a dreamer, he must also be desperate. And that's why he will not allow anything to take him away from the sight of the Lord. Not that the Lord is a man that has future. Because he has future, he must be focused. These are the things that Joseph was seeing that was happening. Not alone. He has glory because God has shown him what is going to become. He has glory and therefore he was gracious. So that alone, I have told you, very handsome man, and he knows that he must combine that handsomeness with holiness. So he was handsome and also holy. Also, you know that even here where we read, our Potiphar put everything in his custody. He became an overseer. Yes, an overseer, he must be outstanding, I pray, in your environment, in your family. Anywhere you might find yourself after now, you will be outstanding in Jesus' name. He was also a man full of vision. Because he had vision, he was violent with sin, violent with self, and violent with Satan. Lastly, 
he was favored, favored of God, favored of man, and is he was is also fiery. I pray you will be fiery in Jesus' name. So Joseph has all these things in mind. These are the things that he possessed, and therefore he cannot allow anything otherwise to hinder him from achieving his purpose in life. From time immemorial, Satan has always fought against believers, most especially those who are conscious of heaven. You are conscious of heaven, you want to get to heaven. Every day when you need that beside your bed and you are praying, you always tell God, Oh Lord, my prayer is, let me get to heaven. My prayer is that even if I want to lose everything on heart, don't let me forfeit my place in heaven. If you are the type that pray that prayer all the time, I want to announce to you that Satan is interested in you. As a young person, that is your desire. That's what I've been praying about. Satan is interested in such a person. The purpose of that fight is to disqualify the qualified. I pray, as you go for this holiday, you will not be disqualified by the time you will be returning in Jesus' name. He said, you, you, you must be qualified and you must always try to qualify yourself. As a reminder, temptation, as you know, is an enticement or suggestion to sin or do evil, whether in feeling or in action. Believers should know that temptation it's a common experience of all men. Sinners are also tempted. Believers, whether matured or young believers, they will also be tempted. And as you are going home, you see, temptation is an ongoing thing. It's a dynamic uh, thing that will always come, irrespective of your experience, irrespective of your status, irrespective of your age, irrespective of your sex, irrespective of your spiritual level. All you need to know that temptation will come to all men. But God expects us as believers to never allow temptation in our life. Joseph was faced with temptation from his master. Why? But he refused to yield to that temptation. So, you know, when temptation comes, it's not a problem. But when you yield, that is when you sin against God. And I want you to know also that there are different battles in life. There are individual battles to be fought. There are corporate battles to be fought. And at times, there are battles you need to fight with all of your friends. And God is the only one who can help you to fight every battle. Just like Joseph, among his brothers, he was an example of believers in words, in conversation, in charity, in faith. And impurity. We are meant to understand that he normally brings to his father the evil report of his uh, elder brother. And that is going a long way to tell us that our life must be shining at every point in time. Many times, the enemy decides the battle we fight. Enemy, many a time, decides the battle that we fight. And also determine the time that the battle will be fought. But God has given his children the right to determine the outcome of his own battle. The Lord will give you that particular determination and you will win every battle in Jesus' name. Even though the enemy determines the time and the battle, you have the right to determine the outcome of the battle. As we are going to go in depth into the life of Joseph, you will see that even though the battle was decided by the enemy, the, bat the battle, the timing was decided by the enemy, but because of his determination, because of his sing the singleness of his heart, he was able to overcome. You will overcome as well in Jesus' name. Some battles, as I said, they are personal. Some are private, as you are. You are the one that knows the battle you are fighting in your privacy. You are the one that knows the battle that you are fighting personally. Some battles are also public and some are corporate. You must be ready for your moment in the sun. No doubt about it. Your moment will surely come. And you must be sure, you must be ready to fight every battle. Not that alone. Don't get involved with battle you can avoid. As I'm going into holiday, there are some battles that can be avoided. Don't get yourself involved in such battles. Number four, the enemy chooses the battle. God chooses the instruments. 
you work out the process. That's God is. Heaven will choose the battle. And God in heaven will be watching. When the enemy is choosing the battle, and God will choose I, instruments. But you are the one to work out the process. And as you work out the process, you will overcome every temptation in Jesus' name. And all that you need to learn through this particular character, the Lord will give unto you this day in Jesus' name. We shall consider the message under three points. Number one, Joseph's testimony before Potiphar's house. Joseph's testimony before Potiphar's house. Point number two. Joseph's traumatic experience within Potiphar's house. Joseph's traumatic experience within Potiphar's house. And before we pray, we consider the last point. Joseph's triumphant smile outside Potiphar's house. Joseph's triumphant smile outside Potiphar's house. Let's back up to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. I want to read verses 1 to 3. Genesis 37 verses 1 to 3. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bila and with the sons of Soba, his father's wife. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. We can see the characteristics of Joseph in this place. Even though he was with his Brethren, even though they were together taking care of their father's animals, we discover that he was not practicing what those people were doing. As you are here, maybe you are going to Ibadan after now, or you are going to Lagos after now, or you are going to Kodakot, or you are going to Abuja, wherever you find yourself, you must stand out. You must live a life that is different from every other person. You will not say, because I sin because of the environment that I found myself. I sin because my parents and other siblings, they are not Christians. And they lured me and they made me to sin against God. Joseph will condemn you on that day because he was in the midst of the people who does not share the same conviction with him. But yet we are told that he was always reporting to their father their evil report. And not that alone, if you look at that Genesis 39, I want to point your attention to something. Joseph was sold from his fatherland into another land entirely, the land of Egypt. And if you look at it, the lifestyle of the Egyptian is different from the lifestyle of the Jew, of the Israelites, where uh, that Joseph was coming from. But he, he, he never compromised. He never allowed sin to rape, even though he was even still staying with people who are not having the same conviction with him, even in the land of Egypt. And yet, we were meant to understand that he was able to stand at How do I know? Look at it in verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. If Joseph was compromising with other dwellers in that land of Egypt, God will never be with him. This verse 2 is telling us that God was with him because he was doing the will of God. As you go home, anywhere you find yourself, if you want the Lord to be with you, you must always do the will of God. Not you, and he was a prosperous man. The Lord will make you a prosperous man in Jesus' name. He was prospering because he was doing the will of God. He was prospering because he, he, he was also in, the, in line with the word of God. And he was in the house of his master's division, verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Even the master himself saw, can witness to it that God was with Joseph. Your parents, your younger ones, your senior, your elder ones, and everybody, your uncle, your sister, they must also know that surely something has happened to this particular girl. Something has happened to this particular young man. He was never like this before. But since he came back, I can see that God is with her. God is with him. I pray that will be your testimony in Jesus' name. Look at it in verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight. In the sight of who? In the sight of 
Potiphar. There's no way a man will not find grace in the sight of another man because he has also he has first found grace in the sight of God. When the way of a man pleases the Lord, surely he will make even his enemy to be uh, at uh, peace with him. And he served him and he made him overseer over his house. When you please the Lord, the Lord will make you overseer in the name of Jesus. You see, there are a lot of things that God wants to oversee. There are so many people that you want to oversee their spiritual life and everything. But if you are not in line with God, there is no way your life can be like that. In verse 5, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And these are the things that you are talking about. Before Potiphar's house, Joseph, as I told you, was a dreamer. A man with great vision. A man with altitude. A man with beautiful plans. And that's why he must always remember his beginning. A man with content, a man with future, a man that is full of glory, handsome man and favored man. That was the description of uh, this particular Joseph that we are talking about. And there's no way a man will have such character that such a man will not be a shining light. And that's why even in the land of Egypt, he was shining. Among the very backers, so when he was in, in their midst, he was also shining. Also a visionary man. He has vision. God has showed him what he's going to become. And he was following the path of achieving that. You are here. You are saying, God, I just want to serve you. I don't want to live, live, give the rest of my life unto you. I want to live a life that will be pleasing unto you. That will be your prayer. I want to tell you, you must be focused. Just like this man was, uh, you must be a man that has the purpose of God in your life. The question I want to ask you at this time is that, brother, are you like Joseph? Sister, are you like Joseph? You must live a life that will resemble that of Joseph. You don't have any excuse to give. You don't have any explanation to give that uh, this is the reason why I have not been able to stand. I want to tell you, Joseph in Potiphar's house was able to stand. Stand for righteousness. He stood for holiness. He stood uh, in the midst of uh, difficulty and temptation. I pray that the grace to stand, the Lord will give unto you as well, in Jesus' name. So you can see that anywhere you find yourself, you must live a shining life. Anywhere you find yourself, maybe in that particular place, the whole of that particular village, you are the only one that is attending deeper life. And there is no even deeper life in that particular place where you are going back to. And you can say, look at me now, I'm the only one here now. No Bible study, no first day revival hour, no Sunday service, and nobody to, uh, to fellowship with me now. Let me just do what I like. When I come back here, I will be continuing, I will be pretending as if all is well. No, even if you don't have any fellowship to attend or things to go, you must also remember that here in the land of Egypt, Joseph has no general coordinator to support him. There was no AGC to monitor him. There was no regional coordinator to see to what is happening. Nobody was giving him a phone call. How are you doing over there? They didn't even know where he was. And even though this where he was not known, yet he was still standing for God. Because he has this thing inside of his heart. I pray. The fire that you need to go home with, that I will plant it in your heart this day in Jesus' name. Point number two. Joseph's traumatic experience within Potiphar's house. Genesis chapter 39. I want to read from verse 7. We have seen the life of Joseph outside Potiphar's house. When he got to the house of Potiphar, he just said, ah, thank God, I think I should be able to have respite in this place. It was a traumatic experience. All the same. As I told you, the battles will always come. And the enemy dictates the battle. You are the one that will work out the process through the instrument made available by the Almighty God. Verse 7, And it came to pass, after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. Why? Uh-uh, ordinary servant. What is she looking for? What's her problem? 
she doesn't have any problem. It's because Satan has decided to use her as an instrument, as object of temptation unto that person. And that is telling you something, that Satan, that temptation can come through anybody. You can never say, this one, she is very ideal. She cannot be an object of temptation. This woman has authority. This woman has money. This woman has position. This woman has everything. Yet, she told Joseph, ordinary servant, said, lie with me. Look at verse 8. But he refused. The grace will refuse. The Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. You can see that sharp contrast response. He refused. He will not say, ah, who am I? So refuse. My master is an opportunity. Even, look at this man, he has traveled, he can never even know what is happening. He does not have any access to know. And this woman is the one even that is inviting me. So let me just take that opportunity. Let me just take this chance and enjoy myself. Bible says he refused and said unto his master to a Dio, My master, what said not what he is with me in the house? And he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. Why? Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? And sin against my father? And sin against myself? And sin against God? He carried his God from his land, even though he was in slavery. He carried that God to where he was in Egypt. That can I do this great wickedness and sin against God. When you are conscious of, if I do this thing, it's not against the general coordinator. It's not against my brother in the same hostel with me. It's going to be against the Almighty God. That will make you to always stand out and never to sin. Let me show you something in verse 10. That verse 10. Sometimes when you read this particular passage, you read it and just feel it's just a normal thing. I want to tell you what Joseph went through. It's not something easy. Look at verse 10. If this woman has stopped at that junction, we say, uh-uh, it's for a while now, and the pressure has gone. But look at it in verse 10. And it came to pass, as she said to Joseph, when? Day by day. She was saying it every day. Pass every minute. Lie with me. She will look at her again. Maybe when she was, when, maybe when she's walking in the kitchen, Joseph, I say, lie with me. After that, day by day, she kept on saying it. And you are here. You say, eh, I don't want to fall into that thing. When that brother, when that person began to roll in text messages, I cannot withstand the pressure any longer. When I open my phone, text messages. When I open my phone, calls will call me. He was calling and calling and calling. And that's why I yielded. Joseph, we condemn you on that day. Joseph was being told by a direct center, seeing her every day. They are having contact every day. Lie with me. On daily basis, he was hearing that. But look at it, let's continue. And it came to pass, as she said to Joseph day by day, that he acted not. First time he refused. This time he acted not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. If you are the one alone with a tempter, and he's telling you, why now, what is your problem? All this while I've been telling you, I've used all the methods to tell that I'm interested in you. And that you are hearing on daily basis what to be your disposition. And you are the only one in that place. And you are the only one in that particular village. And there's nobody who will see you. And the person keeps telling, keeps calling, keeps sending text messages, keeps doing all those things, disturbing you. What are you going to do? And this is the person who has everything you can think about. That you, even, you are even interested in someone. He has a car. He has a house. He has everything. He has a stable job. And he said, what is your problem? Come on. Just let me, just give me assurance. This woman was testing this particular young man on daily basis. You are saying you are beautiful. Remember Joseph, very handsome. You are saying you are handsome, and that's why you have to fall. No, sir. You cannot do that. Because this is a man who was handsome, and will never allow such to happen. Because he knew that once he, do that, he does that, he's going to sin against God. The source of Joseph's temptation was his master's wife. This is pointing our attention to the fact that temptation, as I said, can come through different sources. 
What are the sources of temptation? Let's refresh our memory. Number one, the first place is your heart. And that's where the issues of life flow from. And as you are going for this short holiday, don't let Satan corner you up. And start from your heart. You see, I told some people some times ago, I said, Satan can study a man for years. He will keep studying you. Very patient man. He will study you very well. He will study your path very well. And when he gets you that you are used to a particular path, and he gives you a kind of overconfidence that you can walk on this path without stumbling, he will not put the right trap for you and the right date on that path. God, now you have confidence that I've been done quite time. It's not a problem. I'll be doing that. I can skip quite time for three days now. And nothing will happen because I have a reality before. So that will wash over you. And that, you are keeping two days. You are increasing in three days. Now it's coming one week. You said no. Even all that we had at the workout end of the semester, that you did is even enough. So sustain me, even if I don't pray again, my brother, overconfidence is coming. So that will wash you over and over. And by the time he will do that, you know what he does? He will not dim the light of the world in your heart. If you want to sleep very soundly and very quickly in your room, he says, any put off that light. Put off the light or you change the light, the intensity of the light. Before you know it, you sleep off. And when God begins to dim the light of the word of God in your heart, before you know it, you will fall into problem. I pray you will not fall into temptation in Jesus' name. The first, the starting up, the start one, we call it start one dose. We have to start giving that dose. It's from the heart. From the heart. This is telling us that the first and the greatest source of temptation is the heart. Most times, Satan tends to believe us with what he craves for. As you are going, mind what you crave for. As you are thinking about that thing in your heart, Satan is taking care of you. And he will not talk. Is it most of us sometimes we we, 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 we we believe that Satan will not come in a manifestation that will make us feel that this is Satan. But we hack it out as if when Satan wants to appear, he will appear with horns in his head. So you can know that, ah, this person is Satan. No, as you are craving for that thing in your heart, as you are ruminating and thinking about it in your heart, Satan can hijack it at every point in time. Remember the way he tempted Jesus Christ. You know that Satan did not appear because Jesus all that were described in Luke chapter 4 what happened at the realm of the heart. And that was where Satan normally starts the battle from. And mind what you crave for. From the heart, we notice one, pride. Don't allow pride. Maybe you get home now. And by the time you get home, maybe it's not inform you. They want to put you in suffering. And by the time you get home, everything has transformed. Maybe daddy has got in promotion. Mommy has got in promotion. The city has been changed. But daddy has changed his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his car. And everything has been transformed. And look at it. Wow. So I'm now... Ha! Ah, look at it. And then you begin to look at, look at it now. And you go up to that fellowship now. The way they'll be talking to you. They will know that you have such a very beautiful background like this. Look at all. What, what are you talking about? And you, just, and you are thinking about that. Satan will say, yes, continue. You are, you, are, you, are, you are the daughter of the most, the richest person on earth now. And you are starting, and pride setting. And when your leader begins to call you to find out, say, wow, is it the something you want to monitor him again now? Pride. Pride. In the house. Don't allow that. What of loss? Loss is another thing you need to watch in your heart. What are the things you are losting after? Don't allow anything to worry you. Number three, another thing in the heart that Satan used is revenge. Uh -uh. She did it now. Now it's my time. I told her that time, that time I was broke. I told her to just, just let me 200 naira. And she said, no, now she doesn't have money. Now look at the just sent me 500,000 naira. Or you just send me 2,000 naira. And just send me uh, 1,000 naira. You don't send me uh, 5,000 naira. Things like that. And said, come and, come and lend me. Or come and borrow me this thing. I said, no, no. Can't you remember that time? But I was in need. I asked from you. And you told me, if you don't have, please, I don't think I can just spare you any amount from this money. Side in from the heart. You cannot even speak it out. Your action. But your heart, you must watch it. Another thing is envy. Watch envy. Don't be envious. You have a sister like you. You are in the same department. And she came up here to share testimony. Maybe after you resume or things like that. Or she gave you a phone call that I had a gist that our result is out. And I was told that I had 85A in that course. I said, I don't know the app. He said, well, I was told you had a 53C. 
Thank you, thank you. God bless you. And you dropped. Hmm. So that pick you up. I told you. I don't know the kind of edge you bring to this world. See your fellow sister, 85A. You ask 58C. And say, well, by the way, who, who even know how she went about it? Maybe she even went to see lecturers. Who knows? I begin to envy her. Watch your heart. At that moment, when she said, I have 85A and you have BDC, say, I thank God for you. But just do things that will make your heart so be clear so that you will not have any problem in your heart. Watch your heart. Watch your heart against pride, against laws, against revenge, against envy. In James chapter 17 verse 9, the Bible said the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That is the first place we have Satan begin. Number two is the flesh. After you have watched and you are, you are guiding your heart, another thing you must guide is your flesh. Guide your flesh in the area of appetite. Hmm. Pass. Somebody is inviting you. Say, meet me in Mr. Dix. Say, eh? Mr. Dix. <laughs> Thank God. Since when I, <laughs> when I don't even know how much they are even selling that Mr. Dix opportunity. Opposite gender. Meet me in Mr. Dix. And you hear that. And you and all that fill your heart there was what you are going to eat and drink, the ice cream is going to buy, and do things. And quickly, you forget all that you have been told. And you are calling, where are you now? Are you there now? I'm on my way. I'm inside the vehicle. I will soon join you. Join you to go and do what? Watch your appetite. Immoral hodge. Watch it. We are human beings. All these things, they will definitely come. But you must die against it. When you have immoral hodge, you don't say, yes, it's time. I cannot just help it. Joseph was being spoken to here day by day. Despite that, he will not allow that avoid undue closeness between opposite gender. Thank God, our father in the region spoke more about that yesterday. Avoid this. Hold this unnecessary night call. Hey, as you are going home, please, it's better you switch off your phone by 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I don't receive any call from anybody. Don't tempt yourself. And by 12, and call comes in. Who is that? Ah, uh, you also know my voice by now. Whose voice? Is it the voice of Jesus? Whose voice? Ah, uh, by now you should have been used to this voice. Which voice I should be used to? Quickly, you switch off your phone. And when you wake up in the morning, at least, the person cannot call you for 10 minutes, 30 minutes during the day. But night, don't allow sensation. And he said, I just feel like this is the convenient time we can talk. Talk what? What are we discussing? Are you in one of together? Are you in Mozambique together? What are you discussing? No. It's better you put off your phone. Don't, don't monitor anybody on phone and say, I'm following her up. What are you following up? Follow her up during the day. Want to follow her up? Not at night. That's what we call chemistry of the night. Today, when you start the call, ah, my sister, I thank God, you are, you are rich home. Ah, thank God for joining mercy. That discussion might not go beyond that. When he called the second day, there will be an ad- he will advance. Say, how to ask mommy now? I even tell me the name of your younger sister. Hmm. Problem is starting. Before you know it, it will be going on and on. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number three, appearance, close and indispensable parts. Like neighbors. You meet with neighbors, you meet with relatives, even parents. And from neighbors, what can be the problem? That could be an unscriptural idea. As to meet with them. They can be an unscriptural, they can be practice or sentiments that are unscriptural from relatives. They can carefully edge you out into sinful work, into cancer that is not of God. Parents that are non Christian can lead you into wrong marriage. They say, Thank God, my son, I've been waiting for your arrival. That means. First semester part four is gone. So you are not left with one semester. I believe that after that now, studies are being, but we need to talk about that matter. Which matter, mommy? That matter. You understand that matter? And if you are not so careful, and if you tell me what is that, I say, mommy, I must do the will of God. Will of what? Will of what? No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. That's the way we do it in our family. Ah, look at your brother and your sister. That's the way we arrange it now. We must arrange it. Arrange what? If you are not careful. Look at it. They can lead you into wrong marriages. And by the time you get here, 
Keep quiet. Everybody is talking. You have an idea. I see not is happening. But what you are going to do is inside of your heart. Tell me I don't have any problem. Everything is settled. But you see the man I'm telling you, who told you? Who gave you to that man? Your parents? Or your particular flesh? It will not last eventually. Avoid that. Or environments blown on your heart to breathe on spiritual coldness. They can also make you to, to, to have and a kind of environment that will breathe a spiritual coldness on you. You must avoid that. Number four, overconfidence or self-opinionated. You are a person of yourself. You are so overconfident. I can't have any problem by the grace of God with, with, uh, with this level that I've reached spiritually. No, don't allow that. Number five, looseness during courtship if you are already in courtship. Maybe a final year or things like that. Don't allow that if you are uh, intending purpose. Number six, believers weaken spawn. Just like this, uh, our region of the there are times that you are very strong. There are times you have weak moments. That is the time you must be very, very careful. Number seven, greed and inordinate ambition. There is this get, re- uh, get rich quick syndrome that is around. Even before you graduate, you can have a car. Before you graduate, not that your parents gave you the car. There is a way you can do it. Just follow me. Oh, similar, this is my second car. In fact, I'm just trying to mellow down. I, 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 have, access to, I have access to Jeep. Hmm. But for students. And you want to show you the way. And you yourself, in moderate ambition. Wow, I don't think anybody has ever achieved that in the fellowship. As part for having car, personally, not as the parents. Let me be the first person. Get rich quick syndrome. And before that one, you dabble into so many things that you can never recover from. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Remember John chapter 10, verse 10. The fifth comment now, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at the first what there? To, to what? To steal. To steal away your conviction. To steal away your salvation. To steal away that which you have been building for years. That's what Satan is interested in. Not that alone. When he leaves that level and it's called that something happening, he wants to advance. So do what? What's the next thing? To kill. Satan will not kill your spiritual life. And eventually, if you succeed in killing, you will not destroy that person. That person will not become redundant. I pray you will not become spiritual redundant in Jesus' name. But he said, when you seek after me on daily basis, he said, I am come that you, brother and sister, may have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Throughout this holiday, you can have abundant life. Throughout this holiday, you can have riches in your Christian life. Only if you are able to stand with God. Satan always stands against what God stands for. When God is standing for something, Satan is always against that thing. Not that alone. He also hates what God loves. And he values what God values. We pay, we, we, we pay uh, much value on our Bible study. Now, don't not get hope. And say, thank God. Nobody will be monitoring me now. And Bible study, you are called. So the Bible was saying, this way God's gone. I don't even know. I don't even enjoy their fellowship. It's not like campus. And you're not going anywhere. One month. Hmm. There might be problem. Even I think I've read there than none. Go there and enjoy the word of God. Joseph faced a traumatic experience within Potiphar's house. Especially from his master's wife. As a result of his physical appearance. Elegant man. Very handsome. And this attracted the woman. And the woman kept on telling him on a daily basis, lie with me. But he will not allow that pressure to make him to sin against God. Let it be ringing in your ear. All these things you are saying, sometimes it appears like theory, but they are practical. Look at it, on a daily basis, all this network, glow, MTN, they are coming up with packages that will make sin easy for people. I was just in my house, was it two days ago? I just saw it. There's a particular number you can die on glow and any kind of music. Any kind of, just die the number and send a particular number and any kind of music will be coming up. And you can dance and sing and everything. So even if you want to go and listen to music in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sustainable places, it's even right there with your phone. You can even do it. And somebody comes with you and says, Have you asked? This is what God is doing now. I said, bring your phone. Let me die for you. And he died on your phone. And you are hearing the person. And you are shaking your head. Hey, 
be very, very careful. All these things make things easy. And this is telling us that we must also be very, very careful of what we do. Let's see James chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. James, chapter 1, 13 and 14. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When Satan wants to destroy someone's life, he will draw you far away where grace is available. He will entice you away from where you can reach. Grace can be made available unto you. He will take you to a, a, a ground where grace is not available. And that's why don't touch what grace will not allow you to touch. As you are going for holiday, don't go to places where grace will not allow you to go. God has given us a church as you want to go. That will tell you, don't go. Don't watch. Don't touch. When you have that check, follow the instincts of the Almighty God. Don't allow drawing away. When you are drawn away, you can be tempted and you can sin against God. I pray you will not sin against God in Jesus' name. Before we pray, point number three. Joseph triumphant smiles outside Potiphar's house. We all know the story. What happened eventually? He was put into the prison, and a lot of things happened. But eventually, he smiled. I pray you will smile by the time you are coming back in Jesus' name. You see, I want to tell you: any time you are going on holiday like this, a lot of things happen. Some some people, by the time we are resuming, ah, first week they will not be available. Second week, ah, I she not come back to campus. And maybe the choir master or the head of is calling and calling, and the phone is singing, and the brother of the child is not picking. What is the problem? And people are coming that ah, I saw in the academy yesterday, two weeks, one month, you will not see her in the fellowship or see the fellowship. And by the time you eventually see him or her, sir, what is the problem? They have been looking for you. Looking for who? No, I've seen my fellowship. I'm not coming here again. Uh-uh. What has happened? He might not tell you, she might not tell you the story. All that has happened. But that is how it starts. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So you must be very careful as you are going. Even though Joseph had a traumatic experience in Potiphar's house, finally he smiled because he never allowed the temporary enjoyment with Potiphar's wife to prevent him from fulfilling the dream and beautiful plan of God for his life. Don't let anybody deceive you. God has plans for your life. God has purpose for your life and enjoyment of five minutes, enjoyment of ten minutes. Promise, even if God gives you five hundred thousand, you will finish it one day. Sit down, calculate the money your parents have been spending on you ever since you are born. Look at it; it's more than that money. So don't let somebody just charge you up with five hundred thousand. Just send your account number; it will be paid right now. You will get it instanter in your account now. Just do what I ask you to do. No, if Joseph considered that, you know, women are very powerful. There's a way he can manage that woman and he will have control of everything. But he knows that that cannot be compared to the plan of God for his life. Do you know what Joseph literally became? In the land of Egypt, he was the next person to Pharaoh. And he surpassed Potiphar. He surpassed everybody. If he had announced that, he would have been debarred from that particular position. I pray where God is taking you to, you will get there in Jesus' name. God has planned for you as a sister. You are going to be a wife of a missionary. And you are running after a banker. Say that brother, <coughs> I was told he has moved to another generation, new generation of bank, and they are paying them the duty. And God has said, you are going to be a wife of a missionary. And you are running after a millionaire. You will not be satisfied. You will not. There is no way you can get it. Get it right. So that's why make up your mind. So be what God wants you to be. Brothers and sisters, never allow temporary gain or enjoyment to destroy God's beautiful plan for your life. Let me even check up. How many of you believe that God has beautiful plan for your life? Can I see your hands up? If you know that and you are sure, and it's there inside of your heart, then you shouldn't allow anything to interrupt, to destroy that plan. That was what was driving Joseph. God has shown him earlier on. 
that your parents are bowing down for you. God has shown him earlier on that your brothers, even though they were older, like you, they were bowing down for you. Is it that it's going to become great in life? So what is this greatness that this man, woman wants to give to me? And he decided not to go on that. Everyone is always desirable to see believers having victory over temptation. When temptation is coming, everyone is at attention. Want to look at how you are going to overcome that temptation. Every temptation that will come your way as you are traveling, even as from now till you come back and you continue your Christian race, the Lord will give you the grace to overcome in Jesus' name. So everyone always pay attention to see how you are going to overcome every temptation. Joseph was victorious. How can a believer be victorious? How can you be victorious over temptation? Let me give you today number one, confronting temptation bravely. And never with a light heart. Confronting temptation bravely. And never with a light heart. Number two. Be a single-minded man. With a single-minded devotion to God's will. To God's word. Have a single mind towards God's devotion. Towards His word. And towards Him. Number three. Strong passion for Christ to do His will. Strong passion for Christ to do. When temptation comes, remember Christ. Number four, genuine endowment with the power of Holy Ghost. When you are fully endowed, I pray this afternoon, the Lord will endure you with the power of Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. When you are endowed, you will have this perceptive spirit. You can pass. You can perceive at any point in time. Number five, prayer. Is the master key to overcome temptation. When you pray and you pray more, you overcome every form of temptation in Jesus' name. Joseph has this principle to teach us. Number one, the principle of vigilance. As we are going home, be vigilant. Sometimes call will come in. If you have it and something is prompting you, don't pick that call. Don't pick that call. The vigilance, the sensitive. Forget about it. God has told you, don't pick it up. You don't know what is there. But some people will say, ah, how can I be looking at call? Please, Joseph asked just to teach, to teach us. Number two, integrity. A man full of integrity, even in a strange land. Number three now, circumspection. Circumspection. Number four, trust. Number four, trust. Number five, obedience. The obedience. All that you have asked during this program, obey everything. Number, number six, righteousness. And then number seven, yieldedness. Yieldedness. When you yield yourself, your life, everything to God, I want to tell you, the Lord will surely help you. And I want to tell you, you might not be in Potiphar's house. You might not be like Joseph that is in Potiphar's house. But beware of the following. One, beware of internet. Maybe now, you see, you don't have much to do. And your home could sleep. He has a laptop and it's connected. You are just browsing 24-7. Beware. Internet is good. But beware of what you browse through. Beware of the site you go to. Satan can turn at every point in time. Spend more time to pray. I remember those days. When we are going all day like this, you deliberately decide to go into another family entirely. Where you will not be destroyed. Another family entirely. Also, we even where another, even if the other family is very long, you just go to a family friend that you know is a Christian brother. And there, no disturbance. You will pray and pray. You will read your Bible over and over. Instead of having destruction, we are able to, and by the time you are coming back, you are coming back very fresh. Not that alone, beware of music. Especially the music that satisfies or gratifies flesh. Music is good, it's, it's, it's very, very good. There's nothing bad in it. But beware, be selective. Don't just listen to any kind of music. Number three, reward of unrighteousness. Hmm. Beware of reward of unrighteousness. Get rich quick syndrome. That's number four. Number five, quest to travel abroad for studies. Now, all you are just saying, you see, there's a way to can draw people away. Some people, even the academics will be suffering because they are searching. They want to see how they can do their master's. Even the first degree you are doing, you are not even finished. You are, you are disturbing yourself. I, don't, I want to search for where I can do my second degree. First one, you are not even finished. Be here. 
the last one, exam and practice, forging of results and age. He said, I've already finished the whole work. As you are just finishing like this, the job is waiting. The only thing you do for me, we need to do something about your age. And you're already preparing your mind. You cannot do that as a Christian. I pray the Lord will help us to be a standing believer wherever we go in Jesus' name. Now, let's listen to this as I conclude. We have learned so much from Joseph. Joseph has given us a lot of instructions. And God wants us to follow those instructions. Remember, if because of our quest for higher knowledge or spiritual enlightenment and willingness to learn from any source, sir, you will not fall in Jesus' name. God said, don't touch. They are between don't touch and don't eat. Don't touch. And Satan came. He said, look at it. He turned it. He made her to see the beauty of that particular fruit. She collected it. Gave it to her husband. She had. Touch. Had. Because of quest to learn from any source, she fell. Be very careful. Love. Because of quest for greener pasture and independence without counting the cost. Pitch his tent beside Sodom. Sodom was destroyed. Gomorrah was destroyed. Every other thing also follows. Be careful where you pitch your tent. Esau, because of his desire to satisfy his appetite at any cost, made him lose his bad right. I pray for every sister, every brother here this afternoon, you will not lose your bad right in Jesus' name. I say you will not lose your bad right in Jesus' name. Time will fail me to mention Bela, Judas Iscariot, and Demas, who lost on the ground of covetousness. Their ministry eventually eats the rock. David, Amnon, Solom, Solomon, and Samson all fell flat to immorality. Why? Because of their lost, killed hearts. Something lost it because of unequal yoke in marriage. Look at it now. We are studying Joseph as a good character and we are learning so much from him but look at all these people that I read by the time you'll be coming back from your holiday what are we going to be hearing about you my brother what are we going to be hearing about you my sister what are we going to be hearing about you will you also go away that was the question Jesus asked will you also go away will you come back healthy or you come back unhealthy Will you be like Joseph? Will you be qualified or disqualified? Some people, they went last session, but by the time they were coming back, they came back disqualified. I pray you will not be disqualified in Jesus' name. Some people went, and by the time they came back, they could not join us any longer because they've lost it all. Solomon, he lost it. David, then, Something lost everything on the ground of immorality. I pray that the passion you need, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and commit ourselves into the hand of the Lord. Joseph in Potiphar's house. I want to believe it's time for you to commit yourself to the hand of the Lord. Will you also go away? Hey. Will you also go away, brother? Will you also go away, sister? By the time you resume, when you resume back, one week, uh, we are not seeing that sister in the fellowship. Two weeks, we are not seeing that brother in the fellowship. What is the problem? And we are calling and calling, and you are not picking our calls. Will you also go away? It's time to pray. It's time to prepare yourself. Joseph was hearing it from Potiphar's wife. Day by day, lie with me. But he said, no. Are you going to say no to sell? Are you going to say no to sell? By the time you come back and we cannot see you again, I know you are afraid of pay this afternoon. Joseph in Potiphar's house. I told you, Satan normally begins temptation from the heart. Wash your heart. 
what against pride, what against lust, what against envy, what your flesh, what against self opinion, overconfidence. Pray and talk to the Lord. Oh, I remember those days when we are riding up, workers with things like this, you will see brothers and sisters, they will bow down their heads, and they will be crying unto God, that, oh Lord, I don't want to come back disqualified. I don't want to come back, I don't want to go away. Jesus told to the disciples, will you also go away? Oh, may God give us those things again. Ah, we are the sisters who we are going to ask in the place of prayer. We are the brothers who we are going to ask. I say, God, I need your fire. I need your power. You don't have any excuse. You don't have any excuse. You need understanding, you need wisdom, you need power, power. I will never ever go back to the world, never go back. I will never go back. Will you ever ever? Oh, I will never go back. Go back into the world of sin. You will not be drawn away by internet. I will never ever. Say, God, I put my hand in the plow. I will not look back. He that put it his hand in the plow and look back. Bible says it's not fit for the kingdom. You will not look back. Look at leaders. Leaders have labored over you for the, over this weekend. Pushing the grace of God in your eyes. You will not come back disqualified. You will not come back disappointing us. You will be fiery and you will be favored. I think at this moment you need to really call upon the Lord. You need to really beg God that He will supply you the necessary grace. That you will get the strength that you need to stand. That where others are shaking, that where others are quaking, that where others are falling, the Lord will enable you to stand. The Lord will enable you to stand. While the world is beckoning on you, and they are saying, come to our own side. The Lord will help you. Your feet will be planted upon the solid rock. I will never let the devil win the battle. I will never compromise with sin. Though he may try me with thee, though he may try me without, I will never let the 
devil we want about you I will never let I will never compromise When pride has slain his thousands Immorality has slain his ten thousands What is your decision? Oh, I will never let the devil win the battle. I will never compromise with sin. So he may try me with it. So he may try me without. I will never let the devil name we pray. The devil will not win the battle over your soul in Jesus' name. That which you have gotten, even in this period of three days of waiting upon the Lord, I pray for you, the enemy will not steal it from your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this endowment that you are giving us in this place. We well, thank you Lord for the strength, all oh, and the supply of grace, oh Lord to help us at our hour of need. Oh Lord, we are praying. Oh Lord, we are pleading. Lord, we are making our decision. Lord, we are standing our stand. Lord, we are praying, oh God. Oh Lord, that when the enemy will come knocking, you will give us enough strength, enough grace to say no in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, like Joseph stood. In Potiphar's house, Lord, we are praying that wherever we find ourselves, oh Lord Jesus, that we have gotten, oh Lord, we are praying, we'll be able to stand by it in Jesus' name. You will make us overcome us. You will make us conquer us. Thank you, Father, because you answer. Oh Lord, we are praying that more and more you will deal with us. In Jesus' name we pray.